edition of Conversation with C News. This particular episode, I'm going to focus on the fashion industry, the local fashion industry. Fashion TT wants to start up or create a garment production facility. They've hired consultant Raymond Wong to put out their vision. Um, I'm going to have a conversation with Raymond, but also I've spoken to Robert Young. He is the creative designer behind the club. He has some concerns with the garment production facility as proposed. But first, let's start with Raymond Wong. You're doing the local garment production facility, which is a mouthful. What does that mean? It means that um, I'm doing the business model for the first production facility in Trinidad and hopefully in Tobago as well. Um, it's going to be the first place where the local designers are going to have a place to mass produce a <clears throat> mass produce their garments at a global standard quality. Okay, so we could like if I want stuff from I'm going to just say a local designer mailing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've just discovered unfortunately in my wallet's not happy about that. <laughs> but she can instead of just doing like three dresses or four dresses at a time to have in her shop, she can possibly do larger quantities. Correct. Um pretty much as uh she gets more orders or or bigger orders that will be um, the LPF, a local production facility, will be able to facilitate facilitate the orders and it will be cheaper because you're doing more quantity and a lot of um, the designers now are using local seamstresses and tailors which now the, the quality consistency is going to be different than if one place did it. Right. So does having a local production facility mean that Obviously, you're going to be f hiring technicians, so persons who can sew, persons who can cut, but you all will also have to train them so that there's a consistent style. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. Um, I wanted to ask about the facility because, I mean, a lot of these things, I had to go and look at sublimination printing because okay. I've never heard of that before. Okay. <laughs> you know, what What does that mean? Could, could you give me, a, like, a fashion example of sublimation? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you the easiest way. Pretty much sublimation printing is... Um, instead of screen printing a design on a shirt by using individual screens, it's pretty much the easiest way is um, like an inkjet printer on a piece of paper where you just print very, you know, all full color all at one time without any setup. So like, I was going to Like kind of like what you're wearing. Right. Like kind of like what you're wearing. This is the printing. Um, yes, it is because it's on polyester. Yes, okay, cool. You didn't have to tell people it's polyester. It's that okay. Was, that was uncomfortable. It's okay. Um, <laughs> That's what sublimation is. It's on polyester. <laughs> okay, cool. Nothing wrong with polyester, by the way. <laughs> um, because I was looking at some of the core manufacturing services for the facility. I was like screen printing, heat transfer, direct, that fancy wood printing, sublimination <laughs> printing, and cut and sewing. Correct. So all these are like normal, traditional core functions. Correct. Correct. And so does that mean that we, but not, not manufacturing a fabric? Correct. So we're not making fabric? We're not making fabric. Okay. We're doing cut and sew facility and uh, adding all the details, um, the design, accessories, things like that onto it. It's a cut and sew facility. And local designers have told you this is something that they, they would want. I mean, obviously, you know, we would have had engagement with local fashion designers. Correct. And this is this is something that they want their production facility to provide these particular criteria. Correct. We had a um, a interview process a, a couple months ago as the VCIP, where we actually interviewed the designers um, of kind of like what their needs were, what they wanted, things like that, and to had a, a conversation. Uh, unfortunately, because there's so much variation in all types of designers, there wouldn't be a a way to facilitate everything. Mm -hmm. But we accommodated with everything, with all the comments, and um, <clears throat> with all the comments and their input, we are going to provide them with the best possible solution that we can to facilitate most of the items. So we have clothes that just aren't designed in Trinidad, but made in Trinidad. So you get like a fancy label for dresses and fabrics and stuff like that. If that's what they want, if that's how they want to market it, because it's their own brand. You were doing the business mo model. What do you foresee the business model for the local production facility would be like, um, I guess, for the individual designers if they're approaching the facility to do business with them? That's really up to them. It's really a place for them um, to use because of time, because of time and um, consistency. Um, if they get an order, a lot of them 
do place their orders with the seamstresses or they actually make it themselves, uh, if they get an order for 200 pieces, 300 pieces, they won't be able to facilitate that in if the, the retail store asks them for it in two weeks. Yeah. So pretty much we're helping them and assisting them in doing their, their production. Right. Um, I, and you're doing a three-year business model. So you are, your business model is to start up and get the production facility running. Is that, is that the idea behind it? Yes, correct. Okay. And to give them uh, an idea of how many, um, how many staff needs to be for the first year and why. Uh, what kind of clientele uh, we're going to need, um, you know, things like that for the first year and uh, how we're going to add it in uh, for the second year and third year. So pretty much um, a scope of how three years is going to operate. Okay. And like casually when we were talking before, you kind of said, and Tobago as well, is there a plan to have a facility in Tobago? Um, well, this is a business model, so we can use, if uh, they decide to use this model for other places, it can be the same model but in just a different location what do you I mean you right and we were speaking casually before you said you know you've been here a few times what do you think about what you're seeing from local designers uh, I see a lot of talent I mean um, there's talent everywhere and you know obviously in different places there's different type of aesthetics um, I see a lot of great work I've been I've been here for the Trinidad Tobago Fashion Week and um, you know I did some seminars and workshops for them and I saw a lot, a lot of great things Nothing, I wouldn't even say, I would say comparable to, you know, on a global scale. Like, there's nothing. Like, who, who kind of catches your eye at, at, in the local fashion industry? I mean, I know some people don't like to play favorites, but if you could. Um, I'm going to make no comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make no comments. Wait, my, that's my, my, my role is, <laughs> is to do the business model for the production facility <laughs> to accommodate Mm -hmm. as, as many designers as, as we can. But are you seeing stuff that you might want to incorporate in your local wardrobe or have you already started? In my local wardrobe? In your, your, your sorry, incorporate local designers in your wardrobe. Have you in already wa started? Um, that's a weird question because I'm not the consumer. Um, but you could be. If I'm not wearing this, uh -huh. I'm wearing a black t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers every day to work. Right. I wouldn't even be wearing this today. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I go to work in t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers, and a you white t-shirt. Huh? You work in fashion, so you've developed a uniform even though you work in fashion, which is supposed to be very creative stylistically and stuff? Um, I'm in the business of fashion. Okay. I'm in the business of fashion. I'm not, uh, I don't claim to be a big time designer or to be the trendiest. I'm in the business of fashion. You think the Caribbean needs to think more seriously about the business of fashion? Yes, absolutely. What, other than this production facility, what, what, actually why? Why why should we be looking at the business of fashion? Um, to be honest, when, you know, the, the, the times that I came here and what I noticed is that it's not, the designers are not lacking the talent. Um, they're lacking the business sense of how do we get my talent as a business. Yeah. And that's what um, separates, uh, that's what separates a lot of designers into a business. You know, and we're not, they're trying to, a lot of them are selling supposedly, you know, one-offs or artwork pieces. And um, that's not a, a way how to, to sustain. Yeah, I, I know I've seen that discussion when you look at international fashion mm -hmm. programs. A lot of the designers that we, you know, know of internationally have that problem. It's like, I have to try and balance my artistic vision mm -hmm. with my real business you know, protecting my business and understand that I'm selling stuff or creating Correct. stuff that needs to be sold to be and that sold. people actually want to buy Correct. in quantity, quantities that can sustain my business. Correct. Because even, even in, you walk down the runways, 90% of the stuff that you see on the runway, 95%, you would never see it in stores because yeah. it's only for uh, branding purposes, for the design or ex exposure. But, you know, real um, consumer pieces would actually just be kind of like, it might be a variation of that, but you wouldn't see a lot of, you know, the crazy, um, yeah. the, the crazy pieces, Somebody peacocks on the head or something yeah. like that, you know, things like that. <laughs> I mean, some people do wear the peacocks yeah, on their head and stuff. But that's not for a mass market. No, it's not. It's you know. like a full one of something. It, exactly. You know, um, so, and I think our, 
I think a lot of our local designers do seem to get the branding thing a little, you know, they're not too bad because I, I see that they, uh, you know, I can tell different, you know, styles mm-hmm. and aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Correct. You know, um, so one of the things the local production facility is going to have to think about is intellectual property. Like if I'm doing this order for mailing, mm-hmm. but I'm doing this order for G. Angelique and I'm doing this order for Ecliff Eli, I have to make sure that we're not is is that a, a major is that something one of the challenges that you know you'll have to consider intellectual property N- not at all because mm-hmm. we're just producing things right so it doesn't it doesn't really matter no one's designing anything at this facility mm-hmm. so it's whatever their design is and their tech pack that they give to the factory or the instructions is whatever they're going to make and it's entirely possible that we can be getting orders from persons from from other des- designers from outside of trinidad as well absolutely that is the plan hopefully we can um we can get orders from you know other you know other caribbean islands right barbados jamaica and things like that where we will put trinidad as the main as the main kind of fashion hub or like fashion production uh, facilities for the caribbean or the <clears throat> or this this hemisphere how soon um you're going to start setting up because t- give me a timeline for the whole business model thing so you have to choose a location mm. you know um we expect you expect to start production or start you know have the facility open and start making stuff from you know give me give me an idea of time um i would probably say april may of 2017. really yeah okay if everything runs smooth <laughs> okay. And you haven't just selected a location as yet? Huh? And you all haven't selected because you're still looking for... No, there's a couple options that are on the table. So it's right. really which is the best so viable like one. So in a few days or weeks, you all have a decision to make? Correct. Yes. Okay. And when you say ready in April mm-hmm. for your first order? Possibly, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. That's very speedy. We try to do things on a timely uh, manner. My interview with Raymond took place on Friday, 18th of November. Earlier that day, he had presented his plan for the garment production facility to members of the local fashion industry. Some of the designers took issue with the plans and staged a walkout. One of those designers was Robert Young of The Cloth. All right, so Robert, I know you took part on Friday with Fashion TT's Mm -hmm. um, presentation by Raymond Wong, who's Mm -hmm. the consultant that they've hired to set up their garment production facility. Mm -hmm. I know you're one of the designers that walked out of that meeting because you all took issue with some of the decisions that you heard. What what issues did you Um, have? The issue is that how how is the production facility manned and run? Um, um, How do you want him? take, invest a part of government resources in production and, and miss out completely the working people right. who produce, who sew anyway. So if they're going to be working in the facility, why can't they invest um, invest in, the, in owning, owning the facility? The same with the designer who comes to the facility, owns their business. The facility, if it's being set up, could be owned by the worker. Um, and the so, yeah, issue, so just yeah. to be clear, your issue is not that the, you're fine with the production, production facility. You're not fine with, with the ownership. ownership. Ownership of it. So right. um, let it be a worker-owned cooperative. Let the government set example. Why is that so important? Um, <coughs> that there is a, there's been a history of, of people who stitch, stopping working mm-hmm. with, with, with designers. Um, and going off on their own to set up facilities, mm-hmm. right? In Trinidad. In Trinidad, right? Designers, all designers catch a skim mm-hmm. to produce to produce work. Mm-hmm. How are you getting workers to work in a facility that the government runs, that might pay, com- might be pay basic wages, mm-hmm. and be in there permanently? How are you going to have people invested in something where they don't own it? Mm-hmm. Right? Work on cooperative sets up a situation where the person who is a qualified stitcher, well really good stitcher, commits to a process because they, 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 they own it. They have ownership of the thing. ownership of the, pers- the thing. Because right now they left our businesses to go and own their own situation at home. So the, the a lot of 
in your expertise, a lot of the stitchers, designers, the persons who would man the garment production facility have heavy or high entrepreneurial tendencies. Um, because they, 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 they don't run their own businesses and when they work in your facility, mm. they, they, they manage the production. Right. Right? Um, the assumption that some class position people, working class people can't do it, but middle class people who might have trained them, right. train themselves and a management degree can do it, no, is, 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 not, is not so. Now, I know you also made mention in fact that we have facilities in the park and we have a lot of the equipment. Right, so we have tons of equipment. Here's the concern I uh, have. The equipment is from the 80s or in some so cases. So machines haven't changed. Okay. Since Chuk, 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 chuk. Yeah. So the machines haven't changed right. since it started. Right. Right? A bobbin is finished mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If you want to go into to automate, aut automated mm -hmm. stitching and stuff, I don't think we need to do that right now in front of that. Right. For what reason? Mm -hmm. We need people to, to work, to be able to, because the issue is not about only work, it's about liking what you do, mm -hmm. taking pride in what you do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having ownership. Having ownership of it because you um, why would if you already left, you you, you don't want the end the, the tail end of the the um of the skill level. You want the best of the skill level, right? Right, and let it be a model. All right, this is a model, a model, a one model mm -hmm. of what can happen. Mm -hmm. So then, other other cooperatives can be set up right. where things are produced. Mm -hmm. Um, the same way how. The school feeding program gets work um, in a community to, to provide food for things. Government, if, if, if it's concerned about its viability, the government can commit CPEP uniforms. Oh, you mean for the facility for to sew CPEP yeah, uniforms? To sew CPEP uniforms, mm -hmm. um, to sew bed spreads for your hospital, mm -hmm. to sew things like that. Mm -hmm. um, if, if they're concerned about it. Which is something that they mentioned in the plan. They spoke right. about doing uniforms right. and uniforms that sort of stuff. Right. If, 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 if that so your real concern is the ownership? Ownership. Um, when Fashion TT came up with the plan, um, did they, do you remember or are you aware of if there was any sort of process why, where why they came to you all and concerned? asked you all as to what you all wanted, you all the designers? Plan, in the strap plan, uh -huh. in their strap plan, yeah. they make a reference to a proposal that I made okay. with Silla Benjamin, a right. Nigerian campus. Mm -hmm. they, they will set up a work on cooperative right. with the model of what mm -hmm. living through design well, what, what Robert Jevons But well, what they presented is not a weaker own. No. Okay. So, so it, they, 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 it's, it's something you have to risk. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's like, um, I, I do understand why people people fearful of it. Because I am trying to get... Fearful of the worker own no, no, property. No, no, okay. Right? Um, I want to do it for myself with the cloth. Right. But as later on the road, but this has to come off. And this will come out come up even with or without the government's involvement. Right. But if the government really wants who will make the profit if um where the, where the money goes when Fashion TT sets Fashion up. Fashion sets up this thing, where the money right. goes. Um it's 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 cute. It's not like a CPEP like a CPEP contract. It's a private company owns the CPEP contract that gets paid from the government for the work done, right? Right. This is not this. This is private people coming into a government facility to buy services. Mm -hmm. um, and that's your concern? That's my concern. Not, I, I'm always a personal advocate for government providing services. Providing but, services? But what kind of services? You mean support? Uh, I, I'm an advocate for government for providing services. I wish government could provide the services, but with this time, this, this, at this just juncture, in the, the history of garment production where the garment sores are older, they're dying, mm -hmm. the, the information they have about how to sew and how to run a space is being lost for them. Like one of them, my best teachers, Bailey's best teacher died like four years, five years ago, a woman called Ma Marion Bailey. Um, how are you going to keep keep that, 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 that I call it technology? So um, that the garment, the version of the production facility you are thinking of, um, it's worker owned, but also they will have the transfer of knowledge. Yes, make, of knowledge yes. You think you think the key for you is them owning it because then they will ha they will see the profession as something that they would want to remain in and something that and, and therefore be, be an attractive they, they, they left, industry for people they left to working, enter too. They left working with 
that's working in makers, not makers, micro and larger factories, mm -hmm. or the cloth or by mailing, mm -hmm. um, or by Claudia Pegas. To go independent. To, to go independent, mm -hmm. because they didn't want to work in those situations again. Right. Right? Right. How are you going to And your experience working with these people suggests to you that we could own this we'll, we'll own. food. It will be a difficult process yeah. because it is, it is challenging. Another set of stories, yeah. people who are who are who are of a different class background or different um, in feeling about people who are working mm -hmm. to give them power, mm -hmm. right? It will challenge you completely. Right. Right? So you get to figure that out. We get to figure out how people get to really like themselves that I own this thing, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and I'm supported. And if it doesn't work, because it doesn't need to investment, because mm -hmm. the machinery is already on the ground. These people have machines in their spaces. They may, need a, they may need a facility of, 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 of building space. What is your relationship like with Fashion TT? Is there a, a channel of communication there? Yeah, fashion TT, I don't know what Fashion TT does really. Okay. Um, fashion TT, um, I had a meeting with them about um, two months ago, three months ago. Where, where um, I was concerned about how, how they operate. Um, they have done really strange things. Like, you know, many here they did something called um, a masquerade one time, Sp spent must say about a million dollars on that project. Um, um, the, the FIDC, the Fashion, Fashion Industry Development Committee, mm -hmm. spent a million dollars on doing a, a video mm -hmm. on Trinidad Tobago Fashion. Um, so it is kind of skewed, it's all, all, all a blink. This is a grounded process. We need people to work. How do you work? Because I heard them mentioning bringing in employees, bringing in, bringing in workers. At the same meeting with the Fashion TT, to about Chinese workers, right? That is obnoxious, right? To feel that we can't produce. Because right? we're confident that we have these skills. We have these skills, we have these skills, and we have to back them. And we have the numbers. We have the numbers, you, you can't. So this company is thinking that in September, we have 26 people working in it. In the fullest, fullest production capacity, 26 people is not a big thing, right? 26 people. It is, it is, it is a model to produce work. It can produce for everybody, but it's a model. So it, it can't be, um, it can't be, it, it, it can't work. And they just have to decide that it makes sense to, to do this, right? Um, I don't talk into, this is not, this doesn't benefit me. This is this is Karen Gay, this is Gail Williams, this is somebody like Marilyn Bailey who died, this is this is um, Linda from Arima, this is Dorcas, this is a lot of stitchers all around the place who work in their own independent spaces because they do, those people don't even have to be there all the time. You have a skill base who come in and say, hey, this is how we do this kind of color, right? Greg, Greg, Gregory Mills could come in as a consultant to make sure that the production is tight for shoots, right? But it's a way of empowering people. Um, wh why do it another way? May I, I'm not saying it's that it's, it's government owned and, and the assumption that we own it. Mm -hmm. No, this is work owned. This is this is this is a new economy, mm -hmm. and the government taking a chance to set that up, risk that in this space where people are investing because this is real work. This is not um, this is not punching things in 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 in, 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 in craftsmanship and handiwork. And so and people and that, why they that why they can't own the facility? Okay. Why don't I leave facility? I don't understand. That ends my conversation with Fashion TT consultant Raymond Wong and with Robert Young of the Cloth. That's it for Conversations with C News. Join us next time. Until then, I'm Sweeney Gray.